If you have a good ear for it, you might recognize some French words in this song. But the songs Dennis Stromat and L'Esprit Creole are performing are not in the standard French you might be familiar with. I learned to play this music in Old Mines, Missouri, some as well across the river in Cahokia starting in like 1990. And so a lot of the music that we're doing, these are songs for the most part that I learned from living people. Uh, these are songs that were in the tradition, um, old French folk tunes. Dennis Stromat first became interested in the language as a teenager, but over the last 30 years has become an expert and a musician in what he calls Illinois country French. I was sort of was told or given the impression that French was gone and that all the music, you know, there's a little bit of music left. Then what happens is I moved to Cape Girardeau um, and got to talking with a professor there about our traditions and about our history and he goes oh no no it's not dead it's not gone uh, he said you will find a lot of this in old mines missouri the town of old mines missouri is exactly what it sounds like an old mining town for about a hundred years after the civil war it was known for its mining of barite otherwise known as tiff and even before barite Lead mining had been the prominent industry in old mines since before the 1700s. And because old mines is relatively isolated compared to other early French speaking cities like St. Genevieve and St. Louis, the unique French language of the area was allowed to thrive. Missouri French stayed and grew in old mines until the late 1900s, when the town became less secluded because of better roads and technology. The language is known by many different names, like Missouri French, Paw Paw French, and Illinois Country French. It's not a completely different language, but it differs from standard French in some pronunciations, spellings, and words. Uh, when we were growing up, we just called it French. Yeah, you know? I have no idea what Missouri French or Indiana French or Illinois. Joe Polit and Natalie Vilmer grew up listening to their parents and relatives speak Missouri French in old mines. Every now and then, when they would have friends come in, some of the older folks, and, and they'd be bantering back and forth, you know, and, and you know, you've always heard that, well, they're speaking that so the kids don't understand what they're saying, you know, which was uh, kind of true, you know. My dad um, spoke French more even, uh, more had bigger vocabulary than my mom but he didn't want us to speak French because when he was little, uh, he only spoke French as a child and his mom would send him to the store up the creek to buy something. And he would say, she would tell him what it was in English and he'd say that over and over and over and he'd get up there and of course forget it when he walked in the door. <laughs> well, all these old guys would be sitting around the uh, pot-bellied stove there in the store and uh, they would laugh at him because he couldn't you know, say it in English. So he decided that when we grew up, he, you know, he would not encourage us to speak French. The kids in old mines at that time were also discouraged by teachers and often punished for speaking Missouri French. And though neither Polite nor Vilmer considers themselves fluent in the language, they are some of the best remaining speakers of it. Possibly the youngest speaker of the language is 44-year-old Matthew Pratt. Um, I was actually taking French class in high school, failing it miserably because I was arguing with the teacher that she was saying everything wrong. Pratt credits his Missouri French skills to his grandma and great uncle Pete. And, and he had a funny accent. And so I remember I was staying with my grandmother one day and I said, Grandma, why does Uncle Pete talk funny? And she kind of giggled and she said, well, uh, you know, he was, he was a teenager when he had to learn English. And I'm like, what? Where, where are you guys from? She said, old minds, honey. We grew up here. The Creole language didn't just exist in old mines, though most of its remaining speakers come from there. Linguist Adam Polakaitis says at one time it was spoken in Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri. That whole region is called in French the Pays des Illinois, the Illinois French country. And so the Illinois French 
spoken in Missouri is nicknamed Pawpaw French or Missouri French. He says many Missouri French words contain influences from English, Native American, and West African languages. So in standard French, tornado is dormat, which is borrowed from Spanish. In Louisiana, they call it a colon um, or a tourbillon. In Missouri French, they came up with the term tuniquier, which means twister. So that's a word you will not find anywhere else in the French-speaking world. But of course, there are hundreds of words, phrases, and spellings that are different. And Adam Polakaitis has created a YouTube channel with videos featuring Missouri French words, songs, and folk tales. Many of the videos feature recordings from the early to mid-1900s, and most of the speakers are now deceased. Polakaitis credits a 1930s researcher named Joseph Medard Carrier for making many of these videos possible. He recorded, very carefully transcribed, over 70 different folk tales. There are some that actually show influence from Western and West African French-speaking slaves that were brought into the Illinois country in the early 1700s. Some of their tales have also, uh, aspects of them have come into the Missouri French folk tales. Later, in the 1970s, research into the language in old mines continued with the University of Missouri's Dr. Rosemary Hyde. The researcher published a book of Missouri French folktales and other observations about the language in 1981. Today, filmmaker Brian Hawkins is working on sharing the folktales in a new way. I'm working on a documentary called Toujours des Seats, which is um, really about the just what I found when I when I started diving into this, which is a group of people that was able to preserve their cultural patrimony and their stories and songs and language in spite of pretty incredible odds. The documentary kind of just blossomed because I, I learned more and more about kind of the present state of things. How many people would you say, um, you know, either speak Papa French or do you think speak Papa French or at least some? About 10, you think? Yeah, maybe uh, 10. <laughs> maybe 10 people yeah, left that the speak it. Area. I would be hard pressed to say that there is any one person who speaks it completely fluently. There are people alive now who spoke it as children fluently. And there are several people who were children or grandchildren of native speakers that still retain a lot of words, a lot of phrases. They can understand, but unfortunately, the language itself, that dialect, is restricted to a few people, and it is on the way out. Unfortunately, it, it is not going to continue as a native language for anyone. Yeah. So there's no uh, motivation to learn it, because what are you going to do with it? You know? I, I hate to see it die out. You know, and, and I don't, you know, that sounds, I guess, morbid, but it's not, you know, it's not, there's just, uh, the interest isn't there in the young people, but uh, I think it helps to know, to remember a little bit of where your ancestors came from. And there is plenty of work being done to make sure the language isn't forgotten. Dennis Stromat and L'Esprit Creole perform Illinois country French all over the region, including a recent performance at the January 6th, 12th afternoon ball at the Gateway Arch. Besides the work of people outside old mines like Adam, Brian, and Dennis, the descendants of the Missouri French are trying to spread the language as well. Natalie Vilmer teaches students at St. Joachim School La Guillonne, a New Year's song in Missouri French. She also teaches adults interested in learning or brushing up on the language. Old Minds also hosts a variety of French events every year, and the Historical Society is working on establishing a historic village filled with real cabins once inhabited by French Missourians. But it's up to the younger generations to keep awareness of the language and its history alive. 
My hope is that there is some way that it still continues. And even if that is in song, for, that's how I learned it, was through the song. It, those stories are what led me to fluency. He says the language is still an important part of the identity of Creole French people. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And so to me, it's about a preservation for us as a community, you know, and, and in our French Creole communities, as far as food, language, events, it's what holds us together. For Living St. Louis, I'm Veronica Moheski.